YouTube. Darren here. Going to be kind of an update as to what all's going on. Going to do some shout outs. And today we are going to change the starter gear. Yay, starter gear. But before we do all that, going to do some shout outs. Sulphur City Designs. For all your off road mower mudding, modding, and stickage needs. Bunch of good guys there. Um, I talked to him yesterday, or day before yesterday, actually. He's getting in some uh, new equipment, so uh, t-shirts will look even better. Something to think about, guys. Southern Off-Road Mowers on Facebook. Go to it. Post some stuff. You'll, we love it when you do, but you know you don't have to. It's okay. Chris Larrabee, thank you for subscribing. Chris, I appreciate it. V Sims 2001, thank you for subscribing, sir. Chevy Dude 122, Mower Man, Dylan Gouin, thanks for subscribing, guys. Corey Owens, Badass Lawnmower Vids, thanks for subscribing, guys. Gary Tanini, Tyler Horning, thanks for subscribing, guys. These are the people that have been sharing the videos around on the uh, interweb there thing. Jordan Skilling. Thanks for sharing those videos, Jordan. Jim Rawlings, thank you, Jim. Mike Marin, thanks, Mike. Rob's Pack and Shine. Ford Lawn Man, M Steel Vids. Glad you're back, M Steel Vids. Glad you're back. And uh, actually, I'll show you my paper shredder. Okay, guys, yeah. now we're back. We're and I'm gonna show you. We're going to swap this gear out and put the plastic gear on here. This is a plastic gear that uh, turns out I did have one. It was just at the back of the drawer. Uh, these things, these plastic gears cost around $3.50. You can get them from Briggs and Stratton. You can get them from Sears. I prefer to get mine, uh, their Oregon brand, because they're cheaper. These are the uh, steel gears. These have 14 teeth. These have 16 teeth. And there is also a difference in the shape of the gear, obviously, uh, since one has uh, two less gears, or two less teeth, I'm sorry. You can make, if you wanted this to work, and you had a plastic starter gear, you would just get a flywheel that this matches up with, and usually the 17, overhead valve uh, motors you would just take the flywheel off that and then the starter gear would work the metal one it lasts a lot longer and a lot less problems with the metal one now oh hang on I'll be damned there's Edward hey Edward damn cat you only come in here when I'm filming don't spray my tire alright guys more to come Okay guys, what we're going to do, we're going to take this uh, cap off, take the washer, take the spring off, we're going to take this gear out. We're also going to pay attention to the way that the gear comes off so we will put it on correctly. Now, you see this channel here, and I also want to say something else. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is just how I do them. No right or wrong way, as long as it comes off safely and you don't get hurt, lose a part, and it goes back on and it cranks up for you. Having said that, what I usually do is run a small screwdriver into this channel right here and then I'll continue to kind of work it and pick it around and then I will get the other tool that I have which is actually another screwdriver or a small pick and keep pressure on it slide something in there so it doesn't collapse back down and just work my way around and try not to lose the spring or the uh, I'm sorry the c-clip or the hog ring because uh, I think they're like a buck a piece now I want you to look All at right, something. Guys, more to eventually you're going to work it around oh, let's zoom this out so we don't get all swimmy headed you're going to work it around to where the spring, the uh, C-clip, has kind of worked out of the groove and it's sitting outside of the groove on one side and you're just going to keep working it around. And also, you've been over it, so go ahead and wear some safety glasses as well. Beats losing an eye. 
All right, guys, I'm going to continue to work this thing around. And if it pops back down, it's okay. You got it up this far, and you're just going to keep working it around. I got my finger over it, so if it pops up, I can catch it. And yes, I have slipped and caught my knuckles a few times. Now, I can get a pair of pliers, pop it off, like this. There we go. Okay, guys. More to come. Pay attention to how this comes back, comes off, so you can put it on. The button comes off. Spring comes out. The bendy washer. Don't forget your bendy washer. And it is bent towards the sky. And this spins clockwise to come off. And there is a correct way to put it on. Otherwise, it just won't work. Clockwise to come off. So if I put it on there, it would be still going up. And so it'd be counterclockwise to go down. Clockwise to go up. Counter to go down. More to come. Okay guys, now we're back. Went ahead and cleaned these guys out, and I always put a drop or two of a white lithium grease just in here. I mean, nothing outrageous. Just in there. Some people say don't, but I do. And I've done it that way for a while. There we go. Now, we'll get it all assembled back here. Bendy washer pointing straight up. The spring. The button. And now we're going to put the clip back on. And we're going to pause okay, it right here. now. More we're back. Go. Everything's put back on. There is that C-clip. I get a 10 millimeter socket. That's on the small drive, one quarter drive. And then I tap it into place. It takes you a few tries, but it's just easier than having to uh, do a lot of fighting. Almost got it on. Let me get a little bit thicker hammer. More to come. There we go. Had to get a ball peen. The rubber mallet was polite, but it just didn't have enough weight to it. And that's it, guys. Okay, guys. More to the come. starter is back in place. And I put it in using the handy dandy impact because I'm lazy now and old. So we got this thing set up. One of the problems you can run into if you had to really work this C clip and get it into place, a lot of times when this thing hits the top and impacts this spring, uh, this uh, C clip 
will pop off and the button will go all over the place. So, bear that in mind, it does happen. And just to uh, prevent it from bouncing too far, I may, no, not going to do that. We'll just uh, hope it doesn't bounce too far. All right, guys, I'm going to get the jump box. We're going to bump it off. I'm pleasantly surprised that the fuel that I've put in here, and you can judge, see from right there, has not gone down into uh, the crankcase. That's great. I'm going to uh, check the carburetor again. We're going to see if we can't bump this thing over. I want to make sure the transmission, oh, hang on. Damn, you're a camera hog now, Edward. There. I want to make sure that the transaxle does indeed go forwards and backwards and that the motor cranks, runs, and doesn't smoke. So, now we get to the jump box. What do you say, Edward? That's what I thought you said. More to come, guys. Let's see if I can put it where. There we go. Almost. Let me find the sweet spot. Cranks and runs, no smoke. Um, there's one problem though, and you guys probably already know what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to adjust the valves. Uh, it's something, it's not terribly hard uh, to do just in and of itself. Set up for the video and everything. It takes a little while to set up. Actually, this video is gonna be eight or 10 minutes long. Probably took like an hour and a half to get everything set up. Uh, a little bit of computer work for uh, putting all the names up there and everything so it's just something that uh, and actually one day I'll make a video of how I make a video might be something to do a little bit more to it than I thought too but having said that tomorrow we're going to adjust uh, the overhead valve on it go ahead and do that I may put a camera on it I've done five or six videos but people still ask me a lot uh, to do those we're going to get that thing uh, situated, cranked and ran good. It blew out a, um, a yellow jacket nest or some blob of crap out of the, uh, uh, the muffler. It all runs good. Um, all the other little uh, revving and, and uh, high rev and stuff like that is associated with the carburetor. I didn't see much smoke. It didn't run real long enough to uh, really get warm, but I didn't see any smoke. Still want to make sure that it does indeed uh, go backward and forward before I pull that transaxle to uh, go on uh, one of the projects we got uh, on the books as well. So, that's it for today guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, thanks for subscribing, and uh, thanks for sharing the videos. I really appreciate that as well. It's time to go in. I think I hear the music. Y'all gonna make sure. <laughs>